Good morning. So we are doing the Uddhav Gita. <clears throat> this is chapter 18 continued. Uh, we will be doing verse 23 onwards today. We have been talking about money and wealth and what Krishna has to say to Uddhava. So today we are going to continue with the factor called wealth. What does it do to a human being, a person who has wealth? So we are doing Uddhava Gita chapter 18 verse 23, the last message of Sri Krishna, the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Uddhava. Verse 23, what mortal man would, after attaining this body, which is a gateway to heaven and liberation, get attached to money, which is the abode of evil? Krishna is asking this question. What mortal man? Now this, if you have been given a human body for the purpose of liberation and you are using it for the purpose of gathering money and wealth and name and fame in this world, what is the use of that wealth? When Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda was speaking to Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa in the last stage of his life, Vivekananda asked him, Why is it that I am with you? You are a great spiritual master. Why am I with you? And Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa told him, The reason is, number one, you have a human body. You have a human body which only comes if you have done tremendous amount of sacrifice in the previous lifetime of yours. Which means in your previous life, you have really put in a lot of efforts. Then only you deserve a human body. So to get a human body is literally like a boon. So that is the first criteria. The second one is the intense renunciation that you have. You don't like anything. You really have this feeling that I don't want anything in this world. I don't want the money. I don't want the power. I don't want wealth. I don't want my family. I don't want any relatives. I don't want any kind of association with anyone. This intense renunciation that comes in a person is the second cause. And the third, to get an enlightened master as a guru who will then take you out of this morass of worldly life these are the three criterias which you are clearing up, which you can tick and say, yes, I have them. So number one is a human body, which comes after a lot of toil and effort in the last life. Number two, you have intense renunciation. You really don't like anything in this world. You have become dispassionate. You have become detached. And number three, you need a great spiritual master to take you out of this, you know, the whirlpool of material worldly things. And you have all the three. Sri Krishna is telling Uddhava, you have a human body. And this body has so much of significance that after thousands and thousands of bodies that you have discarded, not of humans, but of all other kinds of creatures, it can be a bird, an animal, an insect or whatever. You have progressed to the level of human birth. And the primary motivation of getting this body is to 
reach the state of enlightenment and freedom. Freedom from rebirths. And this an average human being doesn't understand and realize. If he is going to run after wealth or money, then this life of his, which is literally like a boon, the greatest gem that he has got, he is throwing it away. If there is even an iota of desire for wealth or money, then this human birth is a waste. And this is the truth about life. No one can throw away a life like this. So he is asking the question, what mortal man would after attaining the body, which is a gateway to heaven and liberation, get attached to money which is the abode of evil? Why is the money the abode of evil? You have even a little extra with you. Then another person. That person is jealous of you. Would want to kill you. There is a very, very funny and a stupid incident that happened just a few days ago. It was connected to a dining table and see the funny part there is this British woman who wanted the dining table to be used during the pandemic for her calls naturally she must have been doing some zoom calls or some such kind of a calls with her company and she wanted to use the dining table her flatmate, who is an Armenian, fought with her. I mean, both of them fought with each other for the place on the dining table. You can call it wealth or you can call it whatever you want to. <laughs> a dining table which doesn't even belong to them. This happened in Dubai. It happened in Dubai. This British lady, she had sent all her stuff to UK after she had resigned and she was taking up a new job opportunity and going to meet her partner in London. She had packed all her stuff and sent it away. There was nothing there in that country called Dubai. Now it so happened that when she reached the airport, she was detained and why was she detained? So the Dubai police said you are detained because you wrote these two words on your WhatsApp to this lady or whatever the method of communication that is there. You know the two derogatory words. They, they start with F. And that is all she wrote. Which is such a common word across the world. Whether you take UK or USA or any country including India. The word is F-O. Okay. And that is all she wrote. And now this British woman faces thousands of pounds in fines and she's been detained and she can go to jail for two years all over a table space can you imagine the stupidity of the situation you may keep on blaming the law or whatever you may say but do you see this complaint by this Armenian women saying that 
I need the table space for the for my calls. You cannot have it. For a table which doesn't even belong to them. And that too in another country. How silly can this be? This, I just gave you an example for you to understand how silly and stupid things people really desire. A space. Imagine money. If your colleague and you have joined together in a company and that person might be getting a few hundred rupees extra. It could be because that person is more qualified or has got more experience. Yet there is going to be a very great amount of ill will against that person. Imagine you are getting married and you have a wife to be, you know, a would be wife, her sister, mother, or whoever, and you are taking saris for them. When you take saris for them, now you are trying to be as good as you can be. Just because you gave one person a red color sari and another person yellow color sari and the third person blue color sari and the price range could be just few hundred rupees here and there, there is going to be animosity and jealousy over there. For a few rupees, You may not realize this, but the few rupees, dollars or pounds or euros that you have in your pocket are the root cause of biggest evil in this world. And this is the bane of the society today. You have a little extra and you can get into trouble. Now imagine this body has been given to you so that you can work yourself really hard and get liberated from the cycle of birth and death, rebirths or go to heaven, whatever that you think is the right thing to do. But you are using it to gather money and wealth which is going to be the cause of the greatest misery of all times. Can you imagine that? Here I was talking of just a small item. Then I spoke about the little money. There are companies which are at each other's throat for a couple of billion dollars. For what purpose? So many cases have been, you know, filed against companies for billions of dollars. The intellectual property things. This is the truth about life. Wake up. This body has been given for a very, very specific purpose. When are you going to understand this? So I hope you understood this verse is like that. So we will move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 18 from the Uddhav Gita. Verse 24. The miser who holds money like the proverbial yaksha without sharing it with the gods, the rishis, the manes, the lower animals, relatives, friends and other legitimate sharers in it as well as himself goes to degradation. It is said that money has to be shared amongst a few people and things. Let us see who they are. The first one is with the gods. There are five main sharers. The first are called the gods. Now these are not the God Almighty. We are talking about the demigods. See, each and every demigod is responsible for one aspect of your life. Think about it. We have so many demigods in India. Each demigod 
has a function to look after. Brahma ji is only interested in the production. He is the one who is responsible for creation. Okay. He cannot handle other departments. No. Shivji is for destruction. Shivji cannot handle other departments. Shivji cannot grant you education. No. No. He can bless you. But he can't grant you education. For the purpose of education, you have to go to Saraswati. I mean, think about it. Even in your own company, if you go to the wrong department person and try to put up your case, whatever, you might be wanting one iPad or you might be wanting one calculator, I don't know what. <laughs> you might be wanting a chair for the desk in which you are sitting. And if you go and talk to some person who is not even connected to the department, that person is not going to give you. You know this, isn't it? So you have to go to the right person. In the material world, we have departments for various things. Like if I have to pay tax, I have to pay to the income tax department. Then there is a GST which has to be paid to the sales tax department. Then there are other taxes. Then there are a whole load of things that are there in this world. So taxation is one. Accounts is one. You, you got the whole gist of what I'm saying? Everybody has a different, different department to look after and everybody has a head of the department. Likewise, the demigods are created for the purpose of handling a certain department in this world. So Saraswati looks after education and, you know, your knowledge and all that. If you go to Lakshmi, she handles money, money matters, wealth and all that. So if you look at it, these are the demigods that you approach when you want something. So you want money and power and wealth. You will go and pray to Lakshmi in her temple and say, Ma, please give me this, please give me that. That is what you do. And finally she grants you and she says, Okay, I'll give you some things. She is the one, the sanction and authority. She clears your bills. Now, isn't it required of you to thank her? See, do you get what I'm saying? If your boss gives you a promotion, you can't say, I don't want to thank him. You have to go and thank him. Maybe give a small gift. Right? In the same way, these demigods have to be given a certain kind of a gift. Thank you, dear God, for granting me this particular thing. So the first thing that you owe is to the demigods. The number one person who is going to partake of your wealth or your money. You have to offer something to that God. If you don't, you are making a big error. Right? The second one is to the saints and the sages. Okay? See, the rishis, the, all these are there. The rishis, the sages and the saints. Now you may go to Sai Baba temple or you may go to any other temple of any great master. And you might have asked him the same thing. Or you might have said, please give, grant me a son. Now he is an intermediary, please understand. He is the person who is an intermediary between you and the gods. Agency, an agent. <laughs> okay, he is the one who is going to take your stuff and go over there. Now you got to thank him also because he has to get his commission, isn't it? Think about it. <laughs> he is literally like a commission agent. Though I should not be using these kind of words. But I hope you get the point which I am trying to convey. These rishis, these sages, these saints, okay, the gurus who are the intermediary. In the previous verse, did I not tell you that the three points that are there? First is the human life. Second one 
is the intense renunciation and the third one is the guru that you get. Huh? If you do not have the third guru, then your life is worthless in spiritual. <laughs> you cannot grow anywhere. So you got to thank him also. So he comes under the category number two. So he should, all these, that is, the rishis, the gurus, the sages and the saints have to be offered something from your wealth or from your, the money that you have got. Then the third one, the third is called the mains. You know the mains are yet the dead people. I see dead people. <laughs> dead people, your forefathers. Got it? You have great grandfathers, grandfathers, and maybe your parents who are dead. I don't know. Or maybe somebody who is dead from your side. And if you are married, you have on both the sides. And then there, there, you know, the permutation combination goes on. So many people have died. Now they are also waiting for that little from you. Because they are looking after you. They are looking after you. They are there taking care of your welfare. You know, there are lots of people who would like to take your wealth. Right? One of them are those ghosts and ghouls that are there. So these people, your mains, mains means your dead guys, whoever they might be, grandfathers and grandmothers and whoever, they are keeping them at bay. Don't do anything to this guy. He is our property kind of a thing. <laughs> so the third one is the mains. You have to offer them something from whatever you earn. The money that you get or the wealth that you have, you got to offer it to them. Got it? Then, the animals. You got to offer it to the animals. There are lots of animals, you know. You may have your own pets also. Your dogs, your cats or whoever. There may be some stray, you know, cat that you may be feeding. Birds that you may be feeding, you know. You throw some grains out, the birds come and eat. In some countries you have to shoot the birds. But in India, no, we have to feed them. There are places in India where they call it as a kabuttar khana and all those places. Where people buy a lot of grains and throw them so that all these you know, pigeons and all, they will come and eat. We do this kind of a service. People don't understand why this service is done, but this is done for this purpose. You may feed a cow on the way to office if you are going. And nowadays you may not be going, but otherwise if you are going, you see some cow, you see some dogs on the way, you may take some biscuits and feed them. Right? So these animals have to be fed. And if you are a farmer and all and you have your animals, that is the first priority in your life. Your cows have to be fed, your ducks, your chickens or whatever, they have to be fed properly. They have to be given a proper place, you know, maybe a cattle shed or something like that has to be made for them. It's an investment from your side for them. And that is what you owe it to them. So these are the number four. Got it? So then we come to the number five. Number five is to you and your relatives. You have to give something to yourself, isn't it? You have to spend money on yourself. You should get the fifth portion of it. And your relatives, which means your father, your mother, your wife, your children, whoever it might be. You have to spend this money that you earn on them. So these are the five places you have to offer. But a miser, a miser is a person who doesn't offer. He says, no, I am not going to give. <laughs> this miser, he is like the proverbial yaksha. Yaksha are special kind of creatures. They are the holders of wealth. They salt away wealth. By chance, if you were to meet a yaksha and tell him, please give me some money or give me some wealth, he has got a lot of wealth. These are not human beings, by the way. They, yakshas are superhuman beings. They are the holders of wealth. 
So you are like a proverbial yaksha if you do not give to these five people, these five kinds. Okay? So did you get it? First is there are five people who share your money and wealth. Five. Number one, the gods and the demigods, whoever they might be. They, you owe it to them. Saints, sages and the gurus. Got it? Number three, it is the dead people, the mains. They are dead and gone. You do the dead people ceremonies and all that, you know. That Tiruvart, you know, all those days that you... Yes. The animals. Animals, birds, creatures, whatever that are there. You got to feed them, you got to keep them safe. And the fifth one is to yourself and your relatives. So these are the five sharers of wealth. And if you don't share the wealth with them, then you are like the proverbial yaksha who is sitting on top of the wealth and not giving it to other people. When you die, you are going to become like that. You should know that. You are a miser at this point in time. So we will move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 18 from the Uddha Gita, verse 25. Oh, I was deluded by a fruitless search for wealth which has now gone along with my age and strength. Well, what could a decrepit man like me achieve through that which helps men of discrimination alone to attain the goal? Now, this is a question you will ask yourself. When you become old, this is the question you will ask yourself. Krishna is telling Uddhava. Do you get what I am saying? Krishna is explaining the Uddhava Gita to Uddhava. And he says, the whole life you didn't do anything. When you come to the last stage of your life, you are thinking about it. And you are saying, oh, I should have done it long ago. Is that so? By then, so many vultures have gathered around you, sir. So he says, I was deluded by a fruitless search for wealth, which has now gone along with my age and strength. As a person grows older, his wealth goes away. His physical wealth is all that strength and energy that he has in his body, that also goes away. He becomes an old man. He cannot walk, he cannot see. There are lots of problems that come up with the old age, isn't it? So during his youth, from the age of 16, 18, 20, 22, whatever age that he started, his aim was to make money and gather wealth. I want to become rich, I want to become rich, I want to become rich. And this is a constant refrain. So the craving for wealth, money, is so much that a person spends his entire lifetime searching for this wealth. Sometimes he finds it. There are people who gather a lot of money. They have a big fat bank balance. They have a lot of properties in their name. I still remember a person. This person had, I think about five or six properties in the city of Bangalore. And everything was given on rent to somebody or the other. Their children, that man's children, were not living in Bangalore at all. They were in some other countries. They were earning more salary and more money than this person. But for the future, he had gathered these so many houses so that after retirement, after the age of 60, he will take all the rental in a income from this place and live happily ever after. You know what happened to that man? That person got an attack. He couldn't move his body. 
and he was put in a terrible condition. Half of his body was paralyzed. You know that kind of a face that a person has? He couldn't even eat properly. He was in bed most of the time. The moment he retired, just a few months later, he got this attack and then he was lying in bed. He died at the age of 70. And the only thought that must have been in his mind would be, what is this that I have done till the age of 60? I gathered so many properties, I made so much of money. I, my children are not even here to look after me and this is a fact of life. Not one son of his were there, was there in front of him. No daughters-in-law, no grandchildren, nobody was there. And his wife would put him over there and go away. This man finally died a broken man. But the taste, you know, the taste that is there in the mouth never goes. With one finger typing, he used to watch porn, lying in the bed. I will ask this question. You have spent your 60 years trying to make money and now you are doing this? Which hell are you going to go to? And the wealth, what have you done with the wealth? This wealth which is there, the fruitless collection of wealth that you did, the money that you gathered has gone to the dogs. None of his children want that wealth. His wife also has gone now. She said, I will go and sit in the Himalaya somewhere. So what happened to that wealth? went away. Even in our case, in my case, it was the same thing. There was so much of wealth there and no legal heir, so I was the only heir over there. And what happened to that wealth? Nothing. They asked me a question. Do you want it? I said, I don't give a damn. And it was all given to some charitable institution. But so much you can't even imagine. What is the point in gathering money and wealth when you can't even enjoy this much in your life? A person who works his entire life to gather money build a house, build properties, keep money in the bank so that the children and the grandchildren will get it and doesn't even spend a few rupees on himself, deserves to go to hell. It is a very pathetic case. This is what Krishna is talking about. A person says these words at the time of death. Oh, I was deluded by a fruitless search of wealth, which is now gone. It is beyond my reach. That wealth which I could enjoy when I was a young man, along with my age and strength. Well, what could a decrepit man like me achieve through that which helps men of discrimination alone to attain the goal? That wealth which I gathered is of no use. In the second line he says, My condition is such that today I have so many issues with my health and various other problems in my life. My children don't care for me. My health is left me in a big problem. I have blood pressure, I have diabetes, I have this, I have that, I have cancer, you know. God knows so many things that I have. You see, there are men of discrimination on one side 
who have given up all their wealth and not even bothered to gather it. They have become spiritually perfect and they have gone towards spirituality. The people, those who are there in the spiritual, those who have graduated to becoming spiritually perfect, are always living in a blissful state. It is called Sat Chit Ananda. They are always lost in the Sat Chit Ananda. Truth, consciousness, bliss as they call it. They are living a state of blissfulness. And here, I have gathered this money, whereas these people are so happy. I have never bothered about this happiness in my life. Look at them and look at me. I should have given all my wealth to them. Krishna is telling Uddhava, this is the, this is the problem which a person goes through when he gathers so much of wealth. He is ruining his days, you know. He feels terrible about it. He feels terrible that I can't use this wealth for anything now. And most of it is gone. This is the issue with every person in this world, I can guarantee you. There are very rich people in this world like Mr. Gates and all. They are not giving anything to their children, but they are trying to distribute it in the world. They are trying to make do with what they can. Yes, philanthropy is a very beautiful thing. That will not make you happy. Only a little worldly happiness will come, little. But spiritual blissfulness is million times bigger than material worldly happiness. And this wealth should have been used for the purpose of those people attaining their spiritual will. And what have I done? I have wasted my life and now I have become a decrepit old man. I wasted my youth gathering money and wealth. And today what is the condition that I am in? And this is the major question that he asks himself. What have I done? So we move to the next verse. This is chapter 18 from the Uddhav Gita verse 26. Why are even learned men tormented time and again by the vain quest of wealth? Surely this world is utterly deluded by somebody's inscrutable power. Even if you are an educated person, you may be a highly educated person, you may be a very, very knowledgeable person. Think about all the Einsteins and the Alfred Nobles of this world. Think of Marie Curie. Think of all those great people who were intellectuals. Think of Ramanuja. They were very, very intelligent people. Think of even Elon Musk who is supposed to be a very intelligent person. Or all these people who are owning big, big companies. They are very rich and intelligent. Some of them are very intelligent but not rich. That knowledge also is not coming of any use to them. You can really have all the knowledge in the world and yet that knowledge will not make you happy. I am sure you know about the case of Mr. Tesla. On one side there was direct current and the other side there was alternating current. A great scientist who had thousands, thousands of uh, you know inventions in his name was opposing Mr. Tesla. And he tried whatever possible to destroy that person. It never worked. Today most of the power stations which generate power are with alternating current. 
But even after having so many inventions, so many things, these scientists are never happy. Never. We had a great scientist who became a president of India. Do you think that that scientist died a happy man looking at the condition that India is in today? I don't think so. From the money point of view, from the political point of view or whichever, first criteria in life should be spiritual. And even these people who are highly educated and knowledgeable, they also get tormented because they are in the material world. They are not using their wealth and knowledge for spiritual purposes. The reason why you have been given this life is to reach liberation and your spiritual will. Not so that you can gather all kinds of you know, Nobel Prizes and all those beautiful, you know, plagues that you have. What are the use of all those plagues? You know, the gifts that you get. I want to thank my so and so for getting this gift. You get all these Bharat Ratnas and all these things. What is the use of all those things if you cannot reach the point of realization? You can get as many ratnas as you want, as many gifts that you want, as many prizes that you want. You can become a Nobel Prize winner to whatever. Or you can become extremely rich and wealthy also. But if you are not on the path of spiritual and understanding that this life is not meant for that purpose, but for the purpose of attaining liberation, if you really have no clue about it, then this life is worthless. So, surely this world is utterly diluted by someone's inscrutable power. Why does a person get entangled in the material world like that? Everybody is entangled. Everybody runs after money. Everybody runs after wealth. Everybody runs after lust and greed. They are running after, you know, Women, men, you name it. What is the point? Why are you running so much after money? The question is, who makes you do that? There has to be some power in this world which makes you do those kind of nonsensical things. There is a big power out there. And this inscrutable power that is there is called the power of the Lord. It is called Maya. Maya is an illusory power. This illusory power is in your face. Nobody can overcome this Maya. The only way of overcoming this Maya is through Love and devotion to God. But let us keep that aside. At the moment we are just talking about Maya. Maya is a beautiful woman. Maya is a handsome hunk. A man. Maya is the wealth that is there. The money which tells you, look at me, look at me. Imagine you are walking on the road and you see a hundred rupee note lying over there. I saw a very funny video one day. There is a car parked on the road over there. And below the wheels is a very big, you know, note. Money. Maybe it is 2000 rupees or maybe it is 100 pounds or maybe I don't know whatever it is. So that money is under the wheel of that car. So the passerby looks at that money and says, maybe the person who has parked the car has not realized this. So he says, I will, he tries to remove the money, but it is stuck under the wheel of the car. 
So he says, I will wait for this fellow to come. When he removes his car, I will quietly go and collect that money. So there are lots of people sitting over there. So he goes and sits next to them. Do you know those people are also waiting for that person to remove the car so that they can take the money? There are at least 20, 30 people sitting over there to take that money. After quite a while, the owner of the car comes and he starts the car. All these 20, 30 people are waiting. The moment he goes, I will pick up that money. He takes the car a little in front, goes out, picks up the note, puts it in his pocket and drives away. He got a free parking and there were at least 30 people taking care of his car. <laughs> See the funny part? This money is the biggest cause of evil. And this is what people are after. The wealth people are after. So here, did you see that this whole thing was an illusion? The illusion created by the inscrutable power of Lord and it is called Maya. Money is Maya. Wealth is Maya. All properties are Maya. Your own relatives are Maya. The attachment that you have to your father, mother, brother, sister, husband, wife, children is nothing but Maya. They are going to stab you in the back. Remember this. Your own father will become your own enemy. Your mother who likes you so much may turn into a big foe. Huh? You don't know that? Go and look at the millions of cases that are there. One of my disciples, she was thrown out of her own house, the house that she built. She spent millions trying to build that house, putting money together. Her own mother stayed in that house and took it away and threw her bag baggage outside. Well, this is how the conditions are. Your own children that you, you love so much. Did I not tell you the story where this man is lying on the bed? Hmm? And his children are nowhere to be seen. That is what happens. That is called Maya. The enticing force in this world which catches you in its grip and makes you squirm. The diseases that you may have. Oh, my blood pressure is shooting up. My sugar has gone down. Oh, I am feeling so low. It's all an illusion. It is called Maya. This is the utterly deluded by somebody's inscrutable power. Who is this somebody? Somebody is Krishna. His power is called Maya. We'll move to the next verse. We are doing chapter 18 from the Uttar Gita, verse 27 now. What can a man in the jaws of death want with wealth or the bestower of wealth with desires or those who fulfill those desires or with works which but lead to rebirth? When you are in the jaws of death, you are dying. All the wealth in the world is of no use to you. What is the use of all that wealth? You know, most of you own the iPhones, isn't it? Most of you. There are a lot of people in this world who own iPhones. The company called Apple, the founder of the company, He was dying of a very rare cancer, a disease. 
Apple is a very rich company. His wealth came of no use. He tried so many ways of trying to be alive and he couldn't stay alive. He died like a very thin man. So as much wealth as you have, it's of no use. Absolutely no use. So here he says, what can a man in the jaws of death want with wealth or the bestower of wealth? When you are dying, you are going to go and ask Lakshmi, the one who gives you wealth. Ma, you gave me wealth, but what am I to do now? You can't do anything with that wealth. That wealth is not yours for the taking. Please remember this. That wealth belongs to this universe, to this world. And you have to leave it and go. Nothing belongs to you. You may think I own so many square feet or square meters of property. I have so many properties. I have this, I have that. Or you may have gold. You may have diamonds. What are the use of those diamonds when you are dying? This wealth, this money has no value when you are dying. So he says, this vain quest of wealth. So, I can't do anything even to this person who gave me the wealth. Now imagine your forefathers might have given. Let us take forefathers instead of Lakshmi. Your grandfather or your father might have left you a lot of property. Or maybe I left you a lot of money. And if you are a daughter, you have been left with a lot of saris and dresses and gold and jewelry and all that stuff. Think like that. You might be left with so many tolas of, you know, gold. You have been left with so many bangles and chains and all that kind of stuff. And you have heirloom saris. Saris which might have cost at that time a few thousands cost a lakh of rupees today. And you are not a sari wearer at all. And neither is your daughter. You want to wear only western clothes. You go to Europe to shop for your garments. So what use are those saris? And the Indian jewellery? I don't wear Indian jewellery. I always buy from New York. I buy from Paris. Uh -huh. There are people in this world who may have a pile of saris or a pile of clothes which they have never even touched. Why? I only wear western garments. You only wear western garments? Then what is the point in having that wealth? Likewise, there are people who are caught by the income tax department having piles and loads of cash. I still remember one Babaji. Babaji means all these spiritual fellows. Okay. When he died, they opened his locker, his room. And they found crores of rupees. And they found so much of dollars, pounds and all the foreign notes, currencies. And that man, supposed to be a sage or a saint or whatever. He died a miserable person. What is the point in having so much money in your own room? And there is nothing. He built hospitals. But those hospitals were of no use. There was another Babaji. Okay, I call Babajis. Okay, these are all supposed to be supposedly spiritual masters. He went to the United States, started to start something over there was kicked out of that country, came back. All his balanced life, he was totally drugged. 
what is the use of having so much money that money never came in handy at all the same person's driver and secretary has written scathing articles about him they have written such bad things about him what is the point in having that kind of a life where the wealth that you get is of no use with desires or those who fulfill those desires you may have so many desires you know there was a movie where the person is dying two people are dying the bucket list it is called morgan freeman and jack nicholson they are both saying that oh i have got a bucket list i want to do this i want to do that one is a rich man and one is a poor man well if you have a bucket list what is the point in having a bucket list sir are you going to carry that knowledge into your next life here there is a very strange line which tells you something with works which but leads to rebirth hmm anything that you do in this life at the last moment in time is going to lead you to a rebirth of that kind so if your bucket list says i should have reached mount everest so in that movie the bucket list he says i wanted to always go to mount everest the highest peak in the world good for you since you died with that desire the next life of yours will be a yeti in that mountains is it okay with you <laughs> or maybe a wolf over there uh, it's okay no so whatever that desire that you had even of the wealth you know the funny part is there is wealth and people die they have a lot of wealth and then they die and they become ghost and sit on top of the wealth anybody who touches that wealth gets into trouble have you not see heard those stories before so this wealth this desire of yours the desire to have even the stupidest thing in the world any kind of desire whatever it might be that desire is going to lead you to a rebirth exactly in that position tomorrow you will call out your your wife's name and keep on calling out to you no, oh, oh, oh whatever her name might be and you die at that time sir don't worry in your next life you may become uh, some kida makoda in her body how do you know don't know that that is the life that you are looking for with your petty desires with the money that you gathered with the wealth that you have here sri krishna is telling uddhava this thing what are you going to do what is this man going to do with so many desires so much of wants in this world so much of accumulation of wealth property what is the point this is a terrible thing so we have come to the end of verse 27 the rebirth that occurs because of the stupid desires and the wealth and the money that you have is a terrible rebirth you are anyway going to be born whereas you should have used your life for the purpose of liberation that is why the life was given and the wealth was given for the purpose of distribution to those five isn't it do you remember that but what did you do you wanted to keep it to yourself now please suffer for it in your next life you will be reborn and you will have to go through your hell in this world so we have come to the end of verse 27 and i will see you all tomorrow from verse 28 So take care have a great day and remember these verses bye